Hi, everybody. My name is Danica Jump, and I have, of course, my co-host, Caroline Rena. Hey, everyone. How you doing? Custody Matters Live. So tonight's show, what's our topic going to be, Caroline? Well, we're going to start with instant gratification, and we're going to see where that leads us. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna, it, yeah, instant gratification. I can think of so many directions it can take. Mm -hmm. um, part of it, since we're having, since the topic or the subject of the show is called Custody Matters Live, I would say, let's start with relationships that, um, that we started. I know when I was, when I was young, um, like dating and stuff like that, a teenager and stuff like that, I would always, um, it, it was like, we, I was waiting for the culmination of, some, of, a, of a relationship to be uh, officially endorsed. This is a relationship, you know, when the boy asked me to, to go with him. And mm -hmm. uh, I was like, yes, I've arrived. And I, and I think about all of the other um, kind of mile markers where like, like we find our own self-worth in something being official, like school, for instance. Uh, every time I got a, a degree or a certific certification of some sort, then that was the endorsement that I am successful. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, I realized, wow, that didn't really fill up my cup too much. And, um, but back to relationships, we talked about um, marriage, for instance. Some of us, some of you may have been raised in a religious environment where it was taboo to um, have sex before marriage. And of course, that would definitely want you to urgently, urgently get married. Let's get married, let's get married. My yeah, husband, yeah. hey, we've got to get married now. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because, um, from our, our generation, it's not so much, uh, happening with the newer generation or the younger generation, but we were taught that marriage is, is our, especially with women. Um, I, I feel like is our goal, you know, and they don't teach us how to, how to move through life in a, in a direction where we just, one step at a time, learn from it, make our mistakes, move forward, whatever. And that's where instant gratification is such a tricky bugger is that, you know, I mean, you think of something you want and you got to have it now. I mean, the perfect example I said to Danica earlier was this little guy here. Oh, you didn't see that. Um, <laughs> and it's like, because, and you said something about the, um, the alerts, it's like teaching us immediately. We gotta, we gotta do this now, we gotta do this now. Everything's immediate gratification. And we never learn how to appreciate and enjoy anything in the moment because of instant gratification. And it leads into relationships in, at work with ourselves, with our partners, with whoever. It, it, and that tends to mess things up in relationship. So I've got a question. So. I mean, we know, I think all of us know someone who jumped to a, into a marriage and everybody is like, oh my God, why did they, why didn't they wait? Why didn't they wait? Yeah. And it's like, you can see, you can see it just going off the cliff, like before it even gets start, started. Right. <laughs> um, so what is the answer? The answer is that goes back to instant gratification. Wow. My misery will be over if I can just hurry up and get this divorce. And then, um, yeah, that, that also worked though with the marriage, my misery of not being able to have sex or not being able to be with, you know, show all, all my friends, my ring or whatever that is, that's also an instant gratification. So no matter what direction you look at, whether it's marriage or divorce, it's still about the same thing. And, um, one of the biggest things that's important here to remember is that no matter what decision that we make in our lives, whether it's marriage, whether it's divorce, whether it's going to school, whether it's, you know, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? Everything is based on emotion. And the biggest emotion that we go in into marriage is love and excitement. And the biggest um, emotion that we deal with in divorce is anger. So it's all emotional driven. And that leads us to that um, instant gratification too. It's like, well, I'm angry. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm going to get a divorce before you even really think your way through it. You know, so. 
And if we're not careful, the thing is, is we, we make these uh, choices because we, it, it's, it just feels, and it seems so real at the moment that the source of our discontent and our unhappiness is the other person. Right. Um, so if we could just eliminate the other person from our lives, then we will be happy and we will be content. And I'm not saying that that's not, um, that that decision doesn't need to be, need to happen. However, ultimately we have to come back to how are we going to, um, be truly content mm -hmm. with ourselves. Otherwise this is, this is what the predictable thing is, is well, all right. So now I got rid of that schmuck. Now, I'm going to go find another one who's way not anything like that other guy. Which um, is totally not true. And you know that because <laughs> usually they're either identical or they're, they're like our parents. So we're going to run into something that, you know, doesn't match there. Oh yeah. I, yeah. You definitely end up getting into relationships with the same person. They just have a different face and a different name. Sometimes mm -hmm. not, a, not sometimes the same name, but <laughs> yeah, that would be not good. <laughs> no. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting. You said so, you, you were mentioning a few minutes ago, the, the key to this making that decision, that's you know, whatever the snap decision too, is the only place that you're going to find happiness and, and, um, realization and, um, well, any, any of the positive emotions is in the moment. So we're all like so focused on, well, if I get that degree, then I'm going to be happy. If I get married to this person, I'm going to be happy. If I get divorced from this person, I'm going to be happy. So when do you actually be happy? And the only time, like right now, I'm happy. Danica's happy in the moment right now. We're not thinking about anything of the way it could be. And we've had to learn how to do that. Tell me if I'm wrong about Oh, yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> Happiness yeah. is, um, it's not a future occurrence. Mm -mm. Happiness is, is a now phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. And happiness is actually, what's interesting about happiness, there's a difference between happiness and joy because happiness is always going to be a moment thing. And it may, the next second you may be like, you know, the cat just peed on the floor. You're not, you're not so happy anymore. So that's not, ha that's not where where you want to stay in that. You can't ever stay in positive emotions and you can't ever stay in negative emotions. However, you can be in joy always. There's a, a feeling of joy about things no matter what's going on, you know, and there's a way to learn how to do that. And that's not an instant gratification. That's a consistent thing. Yeah, but um, the thing is, is no matter what, I mean, we can, we can say a lot of this stuff, but let's get back, let's get down to the, the meat and potatoes of someone in a okay. desperately, a desperate situation. Many of our viewers, they're in a situation of, um, of being, you know, beaten down, torn down emotionally, financially, physically. Um, and we're speaking to these people and they're probably, you know, listening to us in all our happiness yeah. uh, and saying, how do I get there? How do yeah. I get there from here? Yeah. So how is that? How does that work? Well, honestly, it, it, it it's a decision. It, it is, it can be a long road. You know, I mean, you can, you can mention a, a, somewhat of what you went through. Some of my story is, you know, when, all, when I started realizing things, it was 20 years ago, and I was what I call in a dark night of the soul on the floor, crying on the floor, trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do, who I am. I don't know what's happening. And I'm like totally depressed. And I made that on that weekend that that happened to me when my kids were taken and my ex walked out of the house, I had to make a decision. I made a decision to take action and move into the next best thing that would help me. And I motivated myself through my own um, uh, story. Basically, I didn't want my ex to not win with my children, but win over me. I didn't want him to see me in a rubber room because I felt like that would, make it, would have him win. So the first step is just to make a decision and take an action, any action, go for a walk. You know, just start getting some energy in your body and you think more clearly, that type of thing. That's what I did. 
Um, I don't know how, what, you can, why yeah. don't you share with me? Well, um, you know, I, and that's really the key is really taking actions such that you're doing something productive for yourself. If you're not able to, uh, you know, even think of your children, like my, for a while there, my children were taken from me and, um, and the, the rare times I had the children, I don't know who they were, but they looked my, like my children, but they treated me terribly. Mm -hmm. So I had to find some place I could create as a happy place for myself mm -hmm. because being a mom was not a happy, happy time for me at that time. So, right. um, what did, what else did I want to do for, for me? Well, what else I wanted to do was I, um, as I wanted to get, get my education, I wanted to develop a solid, st stable career so that, um, the children would have a stable home to be in. And like they, because they did not have that before. So I had to work on certain things and the, and I'll tell you what, the worst thing you can do, like you can do is to have others around you just reaffirming that, um, your search circumstance. So, you know, just commiserating. Right. Um, that was a, that was a huge, like, it's, it's so important. I'm, I'm such an advocate for pairing up with a coach, um, or some sort of mentor or whatever that can be that sounding board, but there has to be a ground rule that we're not going to sit there and commiserate and chew on that, which we cannot do anything about. Right. And I mean, even finding a friend to help you do that, but you have to make sure they understand and you understand that they're not there to, to say, oh yeah, it's okay for 20 years. I mean, they can do that for the first couple of months or something until you grieve your way through that. But if you have someone that, that continue, you continue to tell the same story and they continue to say, yeah, it's okay and validate that forever, then you're going to be miserable. And that's, that's a huge key to, um, getting out of that state. But, you know, we start out the conversation with um, the topic of instant gratification. Mm -hmm. um, and the things that they say, anything that's most, that's worth something is not going to be something that you can get quickly. Unfortunately, that's not how life works. It would be great. But statistically speaking, even people who win the lottery, they are, it doesn't take that long before not only have they lost all the, their winnings, but they are deeper into debt because right. they, it came so quickly versus someone who worked hard to build up what they, what they earn. They're going to make sure that they, they keep it. Um, right. Right. So and there's also the, the emotions attached to that too. Like I mentioned earlier, it's always about, about that. And, and people have like a baseline understanding of how money works. So even people who are going to win all this money, it's an instant gratification, but they still have their baseline that money's bad or, you know, rich people suck or whatever that is. And that also takes care of that little piece of, giving it all away or spending it all or, you know, blowing it that quickly. I mean, but that's where the instant gratification needs to be looked at. So you're not, um, uh, falling into that place of, I gotta have it now. I gotta have it now. And then everything falls apart anyway, you know, just like it would with, a um, with winning the lottery, that type of thing. So again, goes back to emotion. Oh yeah. It's big yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, I, like I said, I mean, I got, um, every step of the way, every job that I had, I was like, Oh, I'm going to win this. I'm going to, I'm going to like, like you're winning a prize. I'm going to get this job, get this position. And it seems so glorious and yeah. perfect and stuff like that. But I'm thinking, but then over time, mm, yeah, I see the warts here and I don't like the way that I, I don't, I don't get enough breaks and I don't like this person, that person. Next thing you know, you're talking yourself out of your joy. For mm -hmm. having the job um yeah so, and it goes back to did the job change did the circumstance change it did not however however our view and who we are and what we bring to the circumstance our thinking is what has us find pleasure in it or um or just there it's just another job now uh and, it, and it's whether it's a job or whether it's a spouse 
or or um, or whatever, or even mm -hmm. even your own children. Um, you know, it's if you're not happy, if you haven't worked, done the inner work, uh, I was just nothing gonna say is going to be sustaining. Right, right, and you're going to keep going after that thing, whatever that thing is. And when you reach the peak of the mountain, then you're going to be like, oh my God, there's like 50 other mountain ranges. Now what? You know, it's like it never, that will never make you put you in a place of happiness or joy. Um, every piece of joy and understanding of, of, of who you are, like you're saying, is inside of you. So it's all about the emotions of love and peace and joy and, you know, whatever those feel good emotions are. I think I have a UPS delivery happening in this moment. Okay, well, we'll pause. So I guess it boils down to if you're chasing after the wind, you're chasing after contentment. Like um, I have the analogy of like, you know, the, the donkey with the fishing pole and in front of the donkey and they have a, a carrot attached to it and the, and the donkey keeps chasing after the carrot and the, and the carrot keeps getting further and further and further. Um, it's it's a practice in futility right um, to to see those things um that are going to bring you happiness when the happiness is not something to be brought to you the happiness is something to discover within yourself exactly yep yeah yeah that's an excellent point and and the thing is is that like all these, all these um, emotions that we have, like sadness and anger and fear and all that stuff literally covers up all of that happiness and joy inside of us. It's in there. It's always in there. It's just breaking through all that stuff and grieving and doing all the things that you need to do to just get to that because it is in there. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you who can, when you cry and you do a big monster cry, you feel better after it. Watch the movie Inside Out. Sadness is the best character in that movie. Mm. It, it, it's a cartoon <laughs> if you haven't seen it. Yeah, it's amazing. It. Yeah, you got to see that. It, I mean, that will really touch. But that's the thing. It's like in one of the scenes, sadness and joy are talking to each other. And it's part of the, it's part of the whole scene with the humans and the the sadness and the joy inside of you. And they're, they're telling, you're saying, oh my God, without sadness, how can there be joy? Everything's a duality, you know? So, but that's all inside of us. That's not outside. You can't make me sad. I can feel sad because of something you did or said, but you can't make me feel sad. No, and that's the thing is we, it, whether it's the way we're raised or just some part of our processing, I think mm -hmm. we have it that um, life will be great if we just have this, this, and this. And it's almost like because if we don't have an element of this, this, and this, then we haven't attained happiness. And or then it's, success. Or success or whatever. And yeah. it's, um, you know, you can be, Nelson Mandela, prison for 30 years. Mm -hmm. He never and then he became rose up to become a leader when he, after 30 years mm -hmm. um there's been so many examples where people have been their circumstances were horrible like if anybody had a right to be sad or depressed it would be those people yeah well victor frankel victor frankel is one who was in a concentration camp for i don't even know how long eating fish heads out of water and and he found happiness in that moment, in that environment, you know, so it, it's doable. What this is, like the way we feel in, in this country, in this society, whatever, is, is taught to us. And then we pick up this um, teaching and it becomes a habit. And then anything and everything that happens bad outside of us makes us miserable. And that's it. We have no, no way out. Or we think we don't have any way out. But the only way out is the way in. Yeah. I would agree. So, mm -hmm. Definitely an inner work thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. um, it does it is help. Doable. It, is, it doable. is doable. Yes. Um, it does help in, um, in a group setting, you know, working with a, a team uh, or working with someone who will not, that, like you cannot give them permission 
to or to pity you you have yeah. to say you know what if you're if you're a true friend you'll you'll say it like it is you will mm -hmm. not let me uh wallow in self-pity you know so um yeah and, and you know there's a fine line i mean it depends on like how raw the wound is too i mean you can say it like it is but you can also be nice about it let the person grieve hold their space you don't even have to say anything you can be with somebody and let them cry or, or grieve or however they work through it out and not say anything and that is more healing than you know in some kind of in your face type of thing too they're all it, de it depends on who you're with it depends on who the person yeah. is and how they how they deal with their but you have to know if you're that person holding that space what they're like because you don't want to destroy you know they're already sad so don't push it <laughs> you know so well i think um i um yeah i really appreciated the topic one thing i do like is that we come like there is no power in a lot of the the negativity and the resignation that we seem that seems to be everywhere uh there's no power in it there's no power in somebody you being held hostage to someone else um to you know to provide your happiness and stuff like that there's just no power in that so taking yourself out of powerlessness how can you empower yourself how can you say, you know what I what I can own um, mm -hmm. in my world? Because once you start saying, I mean, you can even say, yeah, I I choose I chose this person who has uh, abused me emotionally, like physically, and all that. I I did choose that relationship. Um, believe it or not, that can be empowering. Because if you chose it, that means I had the power to choose or not choose. And you have the power to choose differently. That's right. Yeah. And you can even say, wow, I keep getting these spouses that just seem to have this recurring theme over mm -hmm. and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, why me? Why me? God, why me? Why don't you send me somebody else? Well, part of that is because there's something within you that you haven't uncovered that mm -hmm. has you be a magnet for that kind of person. Right. So there's no way that you can attract the person, even if you do attract the person that's not that, you will not be able to even see it or enjoy it or appreciate it or get gratified. Or sustain that, that relationship. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to sustain that relationship at all, yeah. And you said this earlier, we, we were talking on another conversation, you were like, what's the, um, what did you call it? The, uh, I just went blank, um, the common denominator. Mm -hmm. In all those relationships that are not working for you, who's the common denominator? And it's not you. I mean, I've had many, 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 many relationships in my life that weren't working. I was the common denominator. Yeah. Because it was my stuff that was causing that, my um, subconscious, you know, whatever, and attracting people like that. So choosing- It doesn't make you bad or wrong. I mean, it's not no. a, not something, it's, you don't beat yourself up over it. No. You just, yeah. you just acknowledge it and say, mm -hmm. yep, I own that. But you gotta and learn how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh right? gosh. Yeah, yeah, that's confronting. This, uh -huh. I've, I've done several transformational courses and and man some of them are like they're confronting because oh i am well, not willing to look at that shadow mm -hmm. they're confronting to the point in my experience where for an entire year one of the courses i took it was a weekend course and i took the main one as a student and then afterwards i went back to assist and every monday after the course i would throw up because i was getting rid of all that um negative stuff inside of me and it was like oh my god what is going on i haven't done it since then um yeah. after that there was such stuff inside of me that i just needed to release and <laughs> there it was ridiculous so those courses are really good if you really want oh, it like in yeah like some of them are really getting some of them i remember when the some of the first few courses i went to and they you know they had a participant and they were coaching them 
um, the, you know, the leader was coaching them. And I'm like, I'm like, Ooh, that person is saying some, like, Oh my God. <laughs> I just, I feel for the guy on the, you know, the person on the stage is being coached because I'm like, Oh my God, they were so mean. Yeah. I, you're next. <laughs> I know. But the, the thing is that you have to get is that's truly love. Yeah. Like extreme, like love that, I love you so much. I am not going to let you wallow mm -hmm. in that self pity. You are more powerful than that. Yes. Yes, absolutely. That was yeah. good. I like that. That's, <laughs> I mean, it, it was hard when I first started taking these classes. It was so hard for me. It was like my, it was even pointed out to me that my 10 year old little girl was running my life. Mm -hmm. Like every time something happened, she would show up and she'd be like, me? Hmm? you know, and doing her thing and it wasn't me and I couldn't see that. And I was like, wow, <laughs> cause she yeah. what? I mean, you know how 10 year old kids are, right? They're gonna, they're, they're gonna do their thing and you have no, subconsciously you have no control over it because uh -huh. that's my 10 year old girl, but she's happier now. So that's good news. <laughs> I always say that I was like, whenever, um, you know, I work with my, my kids and, you know, and, uh, or just anybody when I, when they're having an issue with, with a parent or whatever. And I, and I, and they say, and I say, okay, so think of them as their, as their five-year-old mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. you're so much, you have so much more grace over when you think of a person who's kind of like irritating and annoying and, uh, or whatever, if you think, okay, imagine that and they're five. Well, that's the thing. It's like if they're acting that way, they probably had a, an event or some kind of a traumatic event or something that happened at that age at five mm -hmm. and they got stuck there. So if they're getting stuck there, yeah, they're going to behave like a five year old. So, yeah, you get to be a little bit more try to be a little bit more empathetic about it. You know, it's not always easy to do that. But if you've got to take care of yourself and, and not go instant gratification, I'm going to beat the crap out. I'm going to blame you. I'm going to do this. Just take a deep breath, walk out of the I'm taking a time out. I got to go before I yell at you as a five-year-old and regret everything I say, and then come back in. <laughs> and that way you're always, you know, recentering yourself and making yourself a safe space for other people and your kids. Yeah, you know, I was thinking even even those of us who've had the pleasure of being in a relationship with a person with narcissistic personality disorder, um, or any of those disorders. I mean, and the thing is, we're not talking about we're talking about the ones that are toxic. Um, yeah, like you gotta you gotta wonder what was their life as a five year old that would have yeah. them become who they are. Yeah. And um, years ago, I, I really got clear that, you know, because I was concerned, even in my own situation, that I, I knew that it was not right to cut my children's father out of their lives, knew it. And I also knew that it was very, he was very, um, from my perspective, very unhealthy. A very, and there was a lot of unhealthy behaviors that I didn't want my children to replicate or even be exposed to. So a lot of us, the answer is, is we'll just cut out that and cut out that and cut out that. Um, and yet I got that. So I, you know, I'd read more and more and more. And I got that. How do we keep our children from be repeating narcissistic behaviors? Um, so you have to go back to what was the narcissist like at five years old? What was their experience of childhood? Well, what I've read is they were, there was not really an environment that of love, of unconditional love. That child grew up where maybe there was no love in the home or no expression of love. So that's why they're screaming for it and screaming for attention and look at me, look at me, look at me, look at how great I am. And there's, mm -hmm. and by that time, there's such a, as an adult, there's such an empty cup that no matter how much praise you give to that person, it's never enough. I got to have more. I got to have more. I got to have more. Next thing you know, that person's sucking the life out of you. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> creating um, a parent, you know, creating 
how can I make sure my child doesn't become that? Well, um, the key is unconditional love. If a child has, you know, um, a parent that's showing them unconditional love, then that child has much of what they need such that they do not replicate the, the, the undesirable patterns. Yeah, and I'd like, I'd like to add something to that. Um, also, it's not only is it the unconditional love, but there is a, a part in that because we have such a hard time with this. I, I know I did, a lot of us probably do, where because of what everybody's saying, we start to believe that we're not a good parent. Well, good enough parenting is good parenting because they're still getting your love, even though, I mean, you're human. Sometimes you aren't fully unconditionally loving 24 seven because the child is acting up. But as long as you continue that good enough parenting where the child knows that you still love them, um, even though you're not like, Oh, huh, you know, whatever, whatever that is. And, um, forgot the other thing I was going to say, which is fine because maybe it wasn't meant to be said. So, but it was, but it's just like being good enough. I had to learn that I was all, I've always been a good enough parent that yeah. my kids are still, you know, they, they can still connect with me regardless of whether I'm being totally unconditionally loving or because I can't hold that. I can't hold that space all the time. You know, no. uh, I'm going to mess up. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Especially if you're, if you're being mom and dad. Um, right. You know, we, yeah. you're dealing with, uh, you are the full-time parent. You got, you're being mom and dad. You can't be mom and dad. You can't. Right. Um, right. Therefore, if you're forced to be mom and dad, you, even that you'll have regret years later. And you're like, oh man, I just wish I had, I'd been able to savor those times more. Well, how could you? you're exhausted. You're working 80 hours a week. You're being mom and dad. I mean, like how yeah. could you yeah. possibly have the time to savor it? Yeah. So don't beat yourself and, up. And especially there's an expectation in our society. Now being a mom, being a woman, not understanding that's the side with men, but for us, it's like, there's an expectation that we have to be the perfect mom, the perfect wife, the perfect girlfriend, the perfect, you know, all this stuff. And, and still hold the job down and still do all these other things. And that's not sustainable either. I think, I think the bottom line for all of this is like, do your healing work, create yourself as a safe space for that child to be able to approach you. Because if you're angry or freaking out or fearful or whatever, you're not a safe space. So, and they're not going to want to come anywhere near you no matter what, um, only because they already get that over there you know, so be that safe space, do the, do the best you can. You can be good enough and still be unconditionally loving, you know, at the same time. So, you know, that's what you're looking for, but this is where you're going to find it in your heart, not out there anywhere that's on right. the other side of the mountain. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. Oh my yeah. gosh. We go on and on. I have right. say, there's so many, so many lessons I've learned. I mean, um, you know, my battle was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um me too it started, no it started 20 years ago no it didn't even start 20 years ago that's when i decided to shift to get my instant gratification divorce because that was the solution right right what year was that <laughs> um huh what year was that 1990 well, 2000 i i left um my marriage um uh, in 2001 like the beginning okay. of 2001, and yeah. um, and thought this is going to be great. We're gonna we're gonna get divorced and we're gonna co-parent happily, and everybody's gonna be great. <laughs> and, um, and I can we can remain friends, and um, and yeah, Yay. that didn't happen um, as I planned it to be. Right. And um, yeah, and it's so funny because I was just just not the other day i was looking through all my boxes because we all have those boxes right Thanks. of all the history and then the journals and stuff like that and i'm reading these journals and these letters and stuff like that and you read i read it and i'm like oh my god who was that naive girl right looked at everything as you know butterflies mm -hmm. and you know and everything I was totally... just gonna be beautiful and everything was going to be solved instantly yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. But that's the way we see. And that's the thing. It's like, if you're with a toxic narcissist and you are 
mostly mentally healthy other than the situation, you know, you're going to see things way different than they are because they don't know how to see that. And, and there, I doubt that they would ever go back and look and say, wow, you know, that I was really naive then and da, 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 that's not going to happen. When you get the, the empath and the narcissist together, the empath gets it because we're basically healthy and the narcissist is not. And then you can't communicate. There's no communication available. So things are going to not proceed the way you think they are because they. Okay. Well, you know, we've, we've had a great conversation and yeah. it's time we've got to, we've got to wrap it up. Um, I love having these positive conversations. I hope that our viewers here are gaining something from it, something positive. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely find yourself a friend or a coach or someone who can, who are, who's going to be empowering to help you focus on some aspect of your life that you can do something about. Um, because, uh, and of course we've learned about instant gratification is not necessarily sustainable. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's a lot of instant gratification is all about bringing the happiness from someplace else instead of here. Yep. So, Absolutely. all right. So Caroline, I look forward to talking to you next week. Yeah. Um, I, we will, uh, I've got a few people that I'm interested in bringing on as, uh, to interview and, and all that, but, um, stay tuned. Um, I look forward, thank you so much for watching. We will see you again next Wednesday evening. Have a good night.